and Roll by Led Zeppelin, the live version from The Song Remains the Same. And before we talk about the guitar parts, I wanted to talk about the intro, because honestly it's the most problematic part of the song, um, especially if you're playing it with a band. What usually happens is that the drummer comes in, but the rest of the band doesn't know when to start playing it. So straight to the point, the drum intro starts on the end of three, so it should be one, two, three, pa 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 And then there are four bars before the band comes in. I'll show you with a click track. I know it's almost impossible to start counting before the drummer comes in. I think it's easier just to start counting from the fourth and pa 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 That's the one. From there you count four bars and you're good to go. And here's the second catch. Page does not start on one either. He anticipates the entrance a little bit. So he actually starts on the end of four. It should sound like this. In the studio version, he starts playing on the upbeat of one. This is how the riff itself actually goes. It's in the key of A. A half step bend here. Your target note is C sharp. Be careful not to over bend. Try to pick each individual note rather than the chord itself. Another half step bend. He does not play the second half of the riff on this version, but it could be useful if you have a rhythm guitar player. How the West was won, he did it with palm muting, which I think is very cool. The whole thing together just for reference. You play the riff in A twice, and then the exact same thing on the D string. Same thing on the E string. I think it sounds better if you pick closer to the bridge pickup. You can dig in a little more and it sounds more consistent. Alright, so that was the main riff. Um, now I want to show you the chord chart. So with this you can actually play the whole song. I want to point out that there are only two different parts on the whole thing. I know it sounds weird, but hear me out. Um, we have the intro, which is the main riff. We will get back to it right away. Uh, and the other part is the main bulk of the song. Take a look at this chart. Uh, this is a 12 bar blues. Um, most of rock and roll songs are based off of this, and it's no different here. This is a cycle that goes on and on, and it repeats itself each 12 bars, hence why a 12 bar blues. Um, and here if we double each bar, and if we play it as a 4x4, that's Rock and Roll by Led Zeppelin. That's basically it, it's a 12 bar blues to a T. The only part which doesn't fit here is the intro, and the, the part just before the solo, which is exactly like the intro. So. That's why I said there are only two parts to the song. Uh, from a purely structural point of view, you'll find a link to this chord chart on the description. So if you read this and you understand how the song goes, then you can actually concentrate on the 
details, which is what I really want to show you in this video. Back to the main riff, let's add those cool feels between the riffs now. So it's basically a C sharp note and a G note. Here an A, so that makes it an A7 chord. Play just the first half of the main riff. And then, while you're picking the open A string, move up your hand. That's how you manage to get on the 12th fret all the time. Add some vibrato there just for good measure. It sounds really cool. <laughs> Play it again. Move that shape one foot back. And here we have C and F sharp, which are part of the D7 chord. It's total sense. Play the riff in the key of D. together sounds like this. I'm using the middle position with the bridge volume and tone wide open but the next a little bit roll down. So the dominant sound comes from the bridge pickup, but there is a little touch from the neck pickup to fatten things up a little bit. This is how he played the intro on How the West Was Won, just for fun. The verse is just a G note on the low E string and then an open A chord. Repeat three times on for each bar. Sometimes I hear the E note, sometimes I hear the A chord. Personally, I prefer the E note. However, I do hear this on the second verse, for example, so it's this. this into the D chord. at the D chord.
playing the riff over the A chord. I thought for years that this was the start of a new part, as if it was the intro, for example. But in fact, it is not. It is the closing of the verse. These are actually the last two A's from the 12 bar cycle. So this riff is actually still part of the verse. in A. And right here we have a clear transition. Page stops playing the riff and does this. And he also uses this pulse to switch to the bridge pickup. This part is just the intro again, but with this lick instead. And here, when returning to the riff, you actually start on the downbeat of one. start on the B note. The first two legs together. Moving on to the next part, uh, we're going from A major pentatonic to A minor pentatonic. Lick 
it is a little bit tricky. Do a hammer on here. Be careful not to let the G string ring first. The G note on the B string has to ring first. Going up chromatically here. Actually, think it sounds a little better, um, but that's not how he played it. So uh, you decide. Repeating. For this lick, pick closer to the bridge pickup. One more time. Next lick. Step in. playing the whole thing slowly.
straight into the third verse. And then we go into the last verse, and yes, this is a verse, it's not the intro. It's just that we're playing the riff over it. We'll play the riff four times, uh, that makes it eight bars. Then four bars in D, then more four bars in A, uh, two more riffs, and then we're going to E, and finish off in D. That's it. this part he's doing all that stuff but in reality he's just messing around with the D chord. You can even just do a pedal in D and it works just the same. And now one of the coolest licks ever. This is the fanfare leading into Celebration Day. Um, that's it, pretty much. Hope you liked it. Till next time. And thanks for watching.